as writers, we did something we should never do, which is we sat down to write it without an outline. Uh, we knew who the characters we were, uh, who the characters were, what we wanted them to be. Actually, we didn't even we did not we had not made the Rosie Perez the Hispanic or English decision. And what we did is we just started writing, and and to see where it would take us, and uh, and several points during during the show we didn't know what was going to happen and something fortuitous would happen that would lead us in a certain direction. We literally wrote up to um, the point, Fraser crosses to the door and reaches to open it before we decided whether Daphne was going to be English or, or Hispanic. And the decision was made by going, oh, English is so much easier at this point, we can change it later if we want to. <laughs> and so that's what the door was open to. And we, uh, uh, at another point, we'd written ourselves to the very last scene, and we didn't know how we were going to get out of it. And we happened to go to lunch with a couple of writers who we ended up hiring on the show, who told us this story out of nowhere. I don't even know how we got to it about the the movie starlet Lupe Velez, you know, the, how she committed suicide, and it it's a, just a really bizarre story. But. Uh, we got back to the office and we were writing that scene and I said, I think Lupe Velez is going to show us the way out of this. And if you see the pilot episode, Lupe Velez does give us our way out of the episode. Uh, it was, um, so there's a lot of fortuitous things. The other thing we did though, going through it was, uh, um, at the time Seinfeld was on the ascendancy and it was the beginning of uh, what I call short attention span theater where the scenes and sitcoms had gotten shorter and shorter and shorter until it was basically, here's an exterior of a building, you come inside for two or three jokes, and you're, then you're on to the next scene. Lots of scenes, short hits, and uh, those work great, they're wonderful. Uh, but we decided to try something different, which was to make Frasier have the longest scenes possible, and the goal being to have a whole episode that took place in real time, or to have an act that in which there was only one scene. Uh, in other words, sort of like a play. And, uh, and then we would re-examine everything. Do, do we need those exterior shots of, uh, of buildings? Is the audience smart enough to know that if we're in Fraser's apartment that he's probably inside an apartment building and we don't need to see the outside of it? And then it was, okay, if we don't do that, what do we have in between? Uh, and that's where he came up with the idea of these black cards, which in the pilot, were merely expository, you know, that sort of helped us keep from um, bad exposition, you know, like, well, Niles, you're my brother, and as you know from our childhood together, our father is, you know, we put the card up to go, the brother. So you, the picture of David Hyde Pierce comes up and you go, okay, I don't have to do sloppy exposition to explain who he is. And, um, uh, and then it was like, well, if we're gonna do those cards, is there music underneath them? And we went, no, we don't have to have music. And to this day, I think it is still the only sitcom that does not have interstitial music cues, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> what was it like taping that first episode that, uh, that night? It was sheer joy because uh, it had been a great week. It was one of those things where everybody knew it was working. Again, it had captured the zeitgeist, except for the glitch with Lisa Kudrow. Um, it had just gone swimmingly. And I remember being on the floor and just the audience just loving it. And uh, I turned up to the little booth where, where um, Jamie Tarsus and, and uh, Warren Littlefield, the network people, were standing. And at a certain point, we, as we were near the end, I turned around and I caught their eye and they just went. And I went, when was the last time you ever saw a network person do that? You know, so it was, uh, it, it was, it was pretty exciting. Did you sense anything at all not working about the show that night on the floor? No. I knew it worked, and I knew it worked even better when, uh, uh, when we when we started editing it. You know, I just went, this is, this has a different feel to it. It, it feels fresh, but it's still funny. And, uh, uh, and, and another thing that we tried, which people go back and look at the pilot, is there's an actual fight between Fraser and his father about a minute long, which is quite serious, and there's no jokes in it, and it's pretty mean. And I do remember having a discussion with the network. They were saying, are you sure you want to do this in a pilot episode where your two main characters are 
are basically at each other's throats. Aren't we afraid that that's not going to test well? Aren't we afraid America isn't going to love that? And, and we finally said, you know, it's real. It's what would happen at this point in the story. So let's, let's not be apologetic for it. Let's just go for it. And it's still one of my favorite parts of the, of the series. I think it's maybe the scene, the part that gives it the heart.